Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own algorithms using a commutator. So, why do we need an algorithm? Why Algorithms are basically vital to solving a puzzle, or at least a Rubik's Cube type puzzle, because um, inevitably, at some point, you'll be presented with a situation like this, where, um, you, you know, most of your puzzle is solved, but you just have a couple things that need to move around, and it may seem impossible to move these things around since uh, without destroying what you've already built. And that's where a commu an algorithm or a commutator comes in. Um, they allow you to move only a couple pieces around, leaving most of the cube untouched. So first I'm going to go into um, actually the definition of a commutator, and then I'm going to show you the pattern that all commutators follow. There's a specific pattern. Then I'm going to show you exactly how to execute a commutator. So let's begin. On the top of the screen, I put the commutator outline there. That is the pattern that all commutators follow. So as you can see, it's x, y, undo x, then undo y. Pretty simple. But, um, so x could be something, and then y is another thing. Undo the first thing, then undo the second. So let's talk about what x and y or y could represent. So it could represent one turn which could be just like that, one turn, or, um, y, or x or y could represent multiple turns. So the length of that um, pattern is kind of deceiving because it can really be as long as you want um, in the turns because um, x and y could represent multiple turns. Let's do a quick example commutator. Um, so maybe our, our x could be a u, and then our y could be a d. Undo x, so undo our u, and undo y, which is our bottom. Um, so, yeah, and now I'm just going to explain a little bit about the nature of commutators, why you'd want to use them. So, and then I'll show you exactly how to do one. So, um, as you can see, most of the cube is solved right here, and only a couple pieces are to move have to move now. This is basically inevitable when solving a puzzle because you're going to want to build up and then, I mean, inevitably you'll have a couple things left that um, you have to move. And it will seem impossible to move things, these things into their right position because um, you can't really move them without messing up part of what you've already built. That's the problem um, and the thing that makes commutators useful. So ne next I'm going to show you exactly how to deal with that problem. Now comes the tricky part, actually making the commutator. Um, before we did technically make a commutator, it was like this, then this, then undo x, and then undo y. But that didn't actually do anything, at least anything helpful. So as you can see in the commutator outline, x now represents a front turn, and the y represents a counterclockwise right turn, like that. So that would mean undoing x would mean doing a counterclockwise front turn, and then that would mean, and undoing y would be a counterclock or clockwise right turn since the first one was counterclockwise. Um, now let's do that. So it was x is this, y is right counterclockwise, then undo x, then undo y, and now we can see that, it's lo that a lot has happened. But let's take a closer look. In this example, I only want to move corner pieces around. How can I do that from this position? Well, the best way to understand how to do that is to undo the commutator we've already done. Um, as you can see on the top of the screen, the commutator we did is front, right, um, counterclockwise, front, counterclockwise, and then right, clockwise. Undoing that would mean reversing each of these turns. So holding the cube from the same position, let's do that. And an easy way to see um, a commutator backwards is to write it down and do a, do a, or make every clockwise turn clockwise and vice versa, then you'll have it backwards. So now um, I've done that for you, and let's follow it. So this is the inverse of the commutator we already did. Um, so it's right inverted, front, right, and then front. And 
the cube has been brought back to a solved state. Um, now that we know that, if we go back to that position and change just one thing and come back to solved, we will only have a few things affected. So now let's see if our theory works. Um, again, the move is up here. It's front down. That's X. Y is right down. Undo X, undo Y. Okay. And now we want to look for a side that only has one piece affected. So this left side works. Okay. But since we only want to affect corners, we need a side that only has one corner affected. And this one meets that condition, since it only has one corner affected. Now let's move another corner into this corner slot. And undo the entire commutator. So um, I have that on the screen now. This is it undone, which is this. That's, and then this, then up, and then up. And now, at last, we need to undo the move we did to bring this down, so we move it back up. And we're back. So, um, we're back apart from these three corners have been moved around. Most of the cube is untouched, but these three corners have been moved around. And this solves that um, case I presented to you earlier, where most of the cube is solved, but we didn't know how to move a couple pieces around without destroying what we've already built. Well, this solves that. And the same can be done with edges that I just did. You just need to find a side that only has one edge affected. That's the beauty of commutators. They're very versatile. Um, they can basically solve any case at any time on really any kind of twisty puzzle. And that's it. And um, that's basically how you do a commutator. Again, you won't be, you after you watch this video, you won't, you probably won't um, know how to like it make you know any commutator to do anything but with a little bit of practice and fine tuning um you'll probably be able to find out how to use commutators in a very useful way to you everyone does um different kind of cases in different ways but my goal for this video wasn't really to show you how to solve a specific puzzle but rather to give you a introduction to the concept of commutators that you can expand upon by yourself so i hope you join the video